Hi guys and welcome back to the Grind Podcast. If you are new here and you've never seen my face before or watched an episode of the podcast, hi, I'm Kath, I'm your host. And on this platform, we are dedicated to inspiring young people to get up, focus, and run towards their dreams. Because who said you're too young, though? We don't believe you're ever too young to achieve anything that you put your mind to. So go ahead and chase your dreams unapologetically. Now, on this platform, we have conversations with young, brilliant Kenyans doing it big right now, regardless of the time, regardless of the economy, and regardless of the environment that we live in. They said the glass ceiling ain't gone stop me baby so welcome to the grind podcast our next guest is somebody who i've been working with for a while now he is a really good friend of mine and the owner and creative director of his own fashion brand at odds clothing i'm currently wearing a dress from their collections look at it fabulous fabulous he is also honestly I was not expecting this, but it's part of the corporate world. He is an IP consultant, if you didn't know what that means, an intellectual property consultant. I'm so excited because he's a big inspiration to me. So welcome to the Grind Podcast. Howie. Hello, hello. Ahoy. How are you? Happy to be here. I'm very happy to be here. I'm so happy you're here, finally. I've been telling you to do this for a while. We've been talking for a while about it. Yeah. Yeah. Outfit check, and that is thanks to at odds. It's grabbing all the right places. Exactly. Mm-hmm. There, the butt, the little waist. It's, it's giving. It's giving. Now we always start by asking our guests how they are at this moment in time, physically, psychologically, emotionally, mentally. I think it just opens up the space to have a more personal conversation. Right. So how are you? How am I? Mm-hmm. I think. Um, Right now, it being halfway through the year, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like I'm mainly starting to achieve all the stuff I wanted to achieve at the beginning of the year. Yeah. You know, how like you always have that vision board. And I feel like a lot of the things I had are only starting to materialize right now. Yeah. So I'm it feeling. Time. Yeah, it's time. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens in a minute mm-hmm. overnight. So I think I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place. I'm really just trying to focus on myself. Yeah. I mean, you could say that a lot, but like, Sometimes it takes a lot to focus as well, just exactly. to focus. So, really trying to do the stuff that makes me happy, mm-hmm. and yeah, working on my business is one of my best things to do. And just like yeah, working on myself, going to the like gym, you, you know, I want to be like you, <laughs> working on myself, working on my business. Yeah, that's, that's, about it. It. that's the best position you could be in, and especially if you're a young person. Mm-hmm. Often you can get caught up in the corporate world. I mean, we'll talk about your yeah. corporate past, yeah. but. Um, a lot of people aren't fulfilled with their lives because they end up in jobs where they're working for other people rather yes. than working for themselves. That's true. And the fact that you're able to like decide this is something that I want to do and actually do it, mm-hmm, big mm-hmm. ups to you because a lot of people want it <laughs> and don't even start it. You know, they're taking the leap, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. just, yeah. Everything is a leap. Yeah. Like you could be like, Jumping over that hill and you crash, or jumping over that hill and the grass is yeah, greener, yeah. you know. And sometimes, sometimes just don't jump over the just hill. Ju- <laughs> That's the worst part to be in, guys. Yeah. It's a hill. It's a bit scary, but it's about the the leap of faith. Yeah. And I'm glad that you did it because yeah. I love your clothes. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Again, we want to get started. We want to get started. Yeah, which is great. <laughs> you know? I like the piece you're wearing right now. You want to talk about it? Thank you. So this is one of our latest editions. Um, it's called the Fali shirts. Ooh. The Fali shirts are um, exquisite fabrics selected from Congo, Brazzaville. Ooh. And um, so we bring them here and then we just make very modern um, pieces. Yeah. So, Because you see a lot of people wearing prints and that, but we want to do um, a print but in a more minimal and approachable um, design, design mm-hmm. for it. So that's, yeah, so we don't do too much on them. It's just like the same design for all of them. But what we do is we change and select the the, the fabric very, with yeah. the fabrics I like 100%, that 100 yeah for mm. sure. available in store yes <laughs> you know. i might just wear one guys should i style it i'm, I'm should i style a shirt I think you should i should it would be interesting I to will. see how you wear it uh, me too you know? me too <laughs> i like the colors bring some color back into my life guys yeah. not black every day <laughs> not black every day <laughs> i do like a bit 
I do like a bit of black though. Yeah, no, I think I it's think my it's, favorite color. Me too. Like low key, why is black everybody's favorite color? <laughs> like, are we all basic? <laughs> like, what? But if you can pull up a simple color, it means you have a lot going as well. You mm. know what I mean? Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about me? Shh. Wink, wink. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yeah. All right. I wanted to now kind of branch into your past. So right. I know you do have a corporate background. Right. What did you do in uni? Like, what what have you been doing in the past before you became a fashion designer and right. own a fashion brand? So I was in school. I was just like um, a student. <laughs> <laughs> Not the student. <laughs> <laughs> the student. So, yeah, I did my undergrad um, in... Brunel, London, West mm-hmm, London. Mm-hmm. Um, sick uni, I loved it. Yeah. And then after that, I proceeded to do my masters in Queen Mary. Ooh. Queen Mary, so that's where I specialize in IP. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that life state that stage of me is like well, I used to, um, I call it the Patrick era. Okay. My full names are Patrick Joseph Harry. Ooh, so I didn't Patrick. know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. So Patrick's my first Kinda name. Me blush. <laughs> you make me blush. <laughs> no, um, uh, yeah, so Patrick was like the initial area where it was very like school mm. and like career driven focus, like, you know, trying to climb up that ladder mm-hmm. and everything. I was a bit, I wouldn't say timid. I was a bit more reclusive yeah. in a way, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But you also just followed. I, yeah, exactly. You were told to go to uni, yeah, so you went to uni. Yeah, yeah. Don't get into the corporate world, you went into the corporate yeah. world. You gotta get a job, you gotta get yeah. an internship, you gotta work on your CV. Yeah. But surprisingly, like, I only studied law because I didn't really know what to do with my life. Law? Yeah. You did law? You know? I didn't know that. Yeah, girl, I did Oh my law. God, I did law. law. So, like, it looked good on paper. Oh, and I think really it was, good. It was good on paper. Mm-hmm. And you learn a lot, you learn a lot, like, in terms of, like, critical thinking and articulating mm-hmm. and also like research and putting shit together <laughs> so that was, that was the only <laughs> good thing i could thing never I'd do say. <laughs> that's <laughs> bold <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. and then after the after finishing my law degree unfortunately i didn't get a job in time in the uk i used yeah. to think i was bad luck but i think that was just the beginning of my new transition yeah so i came back to kenya um first no first i went to my parents live in congo brazzaville mm-hmm. so i went back there for a couple of months when i was just like trying to readjust and yeah. rethink and then someone told me to share the cv with one of um a good consultant here mm-hmm. who does ap and i was like i bet let me go and work in an office farm and ip and really try and see the mm-hmm. practical side of what i've been learning yeah theory school and practical so different I agree. So I different. literally agree because mm-hmm. I've never done marketing and that's where I'm at. Like, And I know so much more than I think I would know mm-hmm. um, having experienced it rather than like going to uni. I mean, it would give me like some sort of background, right. but it's not the experience. You know, mm-hmm. practical and practical, like mm-hmm. didn't reveal shit every day. Real, ma- real yeah, life matter. How did matter. you get into intellectual property? Oh, first I think I had a really good teacher as well because I remember it was during my last, my when you choose your selected um, courses during yeah. your final year, mm. um, I, I, I selected IP and I used to be like a nerd <laughs> for IP. I literally read the books. I, can I was see reading that. cases. I was at the library most of the time, but like, You're also the library. Good <laughs> I was You're a good kid. Game, but like, I was just so intrigued. I was yeah. really intrigued. I used to, like, it was, that's when it kind of saved me because at some point I was really thinking of giving up law and maybe doing like a business administration <laughs> course because I was just, I was so done. I was How did so we done. end up here? <laughs> I was so done. But like once I found that um, subject when I was towards my final year, I was like, okay, this is something that I feel I can sacrifice all of the nitty gritties and like maybe put my head down and read and really be, try and become a really good IP lawyer because yeah. the field is so interesting and like all the concepts mm-hmm. and like the principles and everything like it's just so it's intellectual yeah like some level crazy of intellect you're like wow <laughs> people are so smart and if you if you ever read like a judgment and so you know like judges are so fucking smart it's crazy so, like, and that's they what, aren't you know <laughs> and they are yeah mm-hmm. so that's why i got b- that's when i really got sucked in into ip and then that's it like motivated me to go into the masters and then practice here yeah. in kenya for mm-hmm. a while you know wow that yeah. is so interesting because knowing you now i would have never even thought about it like the other day when we were talking with annette and yeah. you were like i'm the lawyer i'm like what i was like what <laughs> like how yeah. and then i was reading up on you and i was like 
this boy did not go to law school for <laughs> law. Like, wait, mm. that is so crazy. First of all, congratulations, because that's not an easy course to get into. It's not. At all. It's like, not. I remember my dad, pressed because my dad is a lawyer. Okay. I remember he was like, okay, Cav is going to be the one who goes into law. None of us did, by the way. Mm. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> but... um. When when he when he was talking about and I would see massive books like thick books and Yo. I'm like, dude, can I even read Charlotte's Web? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like really? Yeah. Um, but the fact that you, that's that you got a brain in there. You, you okay, got I a brain think. in yeah, there. I can think. <laughs> you can think just, can just, just a little bit, you know I mean? just a little bit. But that's oh, that's yeah. crazy. Mm. So like, okay, so now you came to Kenya. Yeah. Got into IP consulting. Mm -hmm. How long were you there for, maybe? Um, I'll, I'll say like three and a half years. Three and a half years in the consultancy field. What did you learn? Like, what's the like um, the I one thing that stuck with you? I think I also ran. Uh, oh, learn how to run a business. Mm -hmm. Um, in a, to an extent, extent, because I used to work for an individual. Mm. So you'd see how they're able to negotiate, for mm. example, mm. how they're able to maneuver conversations. You know how they're able to from creating an interest to converting it into a service that you're offering, you know, how to yeah. package yourself and mm. all that kind of stuff. And it gave me the corporate lingo and the corporate um, persona that sometimes I feel um, if you go straight into creativity, you might lack, you mm. know, and how to think and look at the bigger picture as opposed to what's right here in front of you yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So for that, I'm very, I'm very thankful for my years um, working here. Also, that was, that was like my first proper job in uni as lacked. I never did any internships. All of my holidays, I was chilling. <laughs> and then you got your first job. You were there for like three and a half years. Three and a half years. Two and a half years. That is so crazy. Yeah. But no, first of all, what? Because <laughs> I've been working since I was in, like, since I left uni. Yeah. I ain't been in one job for like two and a half years. What? I, yeah, I've just been like, okay, mm. I like this. Oh, no, you don't, you don't fancy me yeah. no more. Let me. But like, I did them internships, like, in between. Yeah. So it's like. How you went, got a job, stayed there for 2.5 years? That three and a half years. Three and a, th three and a three half, and a half years. years. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. That is insane. That is insane. So then, three and a half years. Then what happened? Then COVID came. COVID hit. COVID came. And then, <laughs> you know I mean, COVID came and then now we're all working from home. Mm -hmm. I'm working even better from home than I was in the office, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm... I'm hitting my targets. I'm doing other people's work. I'm on it. Yeah. You know what I mean, I'm on it. Mm. And like that ability to be able to arrange when you can do your own work and that kind of stuff it became very, very big for me. Mm. And so when like every, when an employer was like, we have to go back to the office and everything, it was just like, I don't know if I can do this because I've been able to, um, during COVID, okay. Cause whilst I was still, whilst I was still doing work from home, yeah. We started a little business with my cousin. It's called Her Flowery, mm -hmm. where we used to deliver flowers. Basically, it had like a flower business. But we did that just to have extra money. Yeah. And we had more time because we were the master of our own time. No one was telling you have to be here and there. So yeah. that's when I really appreciated mm. um, being able to manage my own time and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And since that business, it didn't last for long, but like it was just like a... I think it, it was like an eye opener. Like yeah, it was like an eye opener. Like, actually, you know, mm. I think you're procrastinating. It's time to actually launch your brand. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Don't yeah. start the small businesses here and there. Really do what you want to do. Exactly. So after that COVID period, I went back to work for a year or so just so that I could like, you know, put some money away, yeah. prepare myself. Yeah. And also moving out. It was that period. Of, like, it, was that, it, was that, it was at that period that I moved out from the place I was staying. So like my uncle's house. Because mm -hmm. like, um, we don't live here. And then, you know, just having your own space and being able to think clearly yeah that's also i think really propelled my ability now to really believe in myself mm. and like really go for it because what i also figured out is that in this life you have to work hard for anything so like i might as well Literally. work hard in something, something that, that want you want to do, do. Know, like yeah. something that will make you happy 100 percent. wow but you went back for an entire year that is after the COVID <laughs> period, yeah. Wow, you learn something um, new every day. Cause like, what? You actually <laughs> went back. Like, I would have been like, adios, and <laughs> bye bye. But um, <laughs> first of all, you had like the fact that you started at least started something. You guys would you, like you decided you want to make some money, so you sold or delivered flowers. Yeah, that is as an eye opener or a teaser into your life, I liked how that shifted your perspective. And mm -hmm. it was like, especially after COVID, 
you're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to go back to working in an office. Yeah. I don't want to work in an office. I want to work on my own time. Mm-hmm. And you know what's so hard and what I find difficult is that I'm, okay, I'm relatively good at working at home, but I'm also like, okay, let me do this, let me do this, let me do this, let right, me do that. Right, right, right. Like, it's easy to get distracted. It's so easy for me to get distracted, which is why I like coming to the office. Um, but it's the fact that you're good at that. You're good at working on your own time, which is something mm. not a lot of people have do, or yeah. able to do. Yeah. Because you hear a lot of people being like, come on, guys, like you got to keep going, stay consistent. Um, be on your Zoom. Do it, exactly. <laughs> do what you got to do. And people, that's what people find hard doing. Yeah. Like, does that even make sense? Did I speak English there? <laughs> but first of all, well done. Well Thank done. Way to go. Well, well done. So has fashion design always been like... Um, yeah, I think so. I think so, for sure. When, um, did, when did that switch happen? Mm. Uh, to be honest, it's actually very funny. I actually once had a dream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was quirky and it was on the leg. I had a dream. <laughs> I had a dream. I had a dream. I had a dream. <laughs> I made this jacket. I had a dream that I made this really dope jacket. Mm. And I woke up in the middle of the night. And this, this is even before I had gone to uni. Mm. So I had this dream. I made this really crazy, insane jacket. And I woke up in the morning and I sat next to my bed. And I was like, wow. But I just didn't know with fashion. Like, I don't know. I don't think that there's a path for fashion mm. so i didn't know where i would even have to start yeah so my idea was like okay i'll go to law school <laughs> <laughs> after that dream then my idea was like okay i'll go to law school <laughs> make money and then i can invest the money into Easy. so like even the whole law and everything was always a means to an end okay do you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah it wasn't your goal yeah exactly but you knew what you wanted to do. I do, I did. You woke did. up and you were like, wow, <laughs> I have an idea. Uh, yeah. I'm run. And you did it. Even if it was like years later, the fact yeah, that you, you did, did it. Because yeah. a lot of people talk about that five seconds, you know, that five seconds. Or that like immediate like action, mm-hmm. which is, yes, it is a good thing. Right, right, um, right. But the fact that you had that dream mm-hmm. and didn't like necessarily start right then. Uh, you yeah. started in a different way to yeah. then get to that. That's. <laughs> I'm so mind blown. I didn't know you were like this, homie. Well, I know. This is why we have conversations, guys. This is why we have conversations. That's true. So, how long has your baby at odds been around? Um. So. So right after we went back into work, mm-hmm. there was just like that period right after COVID, when I think everyone went to work, but it was never constant going back to work. Yeah. Sometimes it was just outbreaks, and then you had to go back home for a while. Mm. So it was like I think COVID broke out in twenty twenty properly, and mm. like in twenty twenty one on my birthday in March is when I put out the brand. I did my first photo shoot and everything. But since I was still working at the office, mm. I, w- I wasn't giving it my all. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. very passive. Mm. Like, I did like one photo shoot. Like, basically, I was just like posting shit on mm-hmm. Instagram. I wasn't really doing anything mm-hmm. for the But you brand. already had like an outfit out. You yeah, some yeah. Stuff out. I had like the Howie One jackets, which is the series of the first jackets we designed. Mm-hmm. And we did a um, really dope us. Um, shoot with Steph from Panzigo mm. and like she gave me so much I just I was posting that for the rest of the year <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I, but I knew that was just like the build up because from now from 2022 was when I quit my job mm. um, I was like yeah December at the beginning of December handing my notice and I knew I'm gonna go full on head on with this thing was that hard? was it scary? Um, or did you just already know like I'm gonna be good I think there was just there was also so many other variables, you know. Everyone at the office was living, do you no, know what I mean? Mm. And then, like, I didn't want to stay there as well. Like, not have anything against my employer or anything. It was just it was just time, you know. It yeah. was time, and it was just like I couldn't. I was getting frustrated being at, at the, the office, office and that kind of stuff. So that also really propelled me mm-hmm. to like, and I was working so hard, do you know what I mean? Mm. Working so hard for very little return. Mm-hmm. So that was like, if I can focus all this energy mm. into something that I can sweat and do all the work and for, be happy do you know, and be happy because mm. I know I can work hard. Mm. I just need to put my energy at the right place. Mm. Exactly. Shift your energy. A hundred percent. So like that's when I quit my job, and then once I quit my job, it was now okay. How do we sustain ourselves yeah and then how do we make this brand work mm. and um and from there you just hit the ground running because every day you're working towards your business exactly even if, even if it's one or two tasks but it's going back into your business and mm. how and then and since then the progress has been mad 
it's actually crazy within the one in seven months so i have in june one year one, seven one, months one one year six months because we're in june right? one year yeah 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 one year six one year months, six we've, months? We've why do i feel like active. you've been around for like years i don't know, I don't know. you've I don't had know. that effect i think <laughs> we had odds. a good penetration i'd say the you did. Really good penetration, yeah. yeah congratulations i mean i always do this i always lose my words because i'm like <laughs> what like what <laughs> that is so crazy yeah. but do you ha- do you find that like because i know starting a business anyway like mm. whatever business you're getting into you're always taking a risk so with true. with something yeah um did you like would you s- if somebody was looking to get into like fashion design mm-hmm. and start a fashion brand what would be like the first thing you would tell them um i'd really say try not to listen to too much of outside advice on okay at that time mm-hmm. the market was very tough so most of the people who i would ask they'd be like yeah the kenyan market is so tough mm. everyone is so price sensitive it's so hard to have a successful brand in Kenya. Mm. You know, if you can really work on selling to your pe- um, your contacts abroad, maybe that's the only way you can do it. Really? So it wasn't like, oh, yeah, 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 do it. Because, like, even a lot of people were always like, no, no, because also because you're a lawyer, just, like, carry on doing law. And yeah, you like, tra- you've got the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're in the best position. Yeah, now exactly. you're going into fashion. Exactly. Exactly. So it didn't make sense. Mm. It didn't make sense to a lot of people. And... I was talked out of most people talked me out of it do you know what i mean most mm. people talked me out of it and oh. that's like and that's when i realized i really need to do this you're still here yeah <laughs> i ain't gonna listen really to nobody to this, you know <laughs> you ain't gonna mm. tell me do you know what i mean i'm gonna do it and mm. show you how i'm gonna do it so well and that's mm. yeah so that was like some of the but like some of the best advice i'll probably give is also like uh have some respect for yourself yeah in a sense of like anything you put out don't okay, i'm not saying you should be a perfectionist try and put out stuff yeah. as much as you can yeah. but don't put out stuff that you could you could still do a better job out mm. of it i mean mm. don't rush it don't yeah. rush it mm. like i'm made like at least 10 products that i was never happy or satisfied with it mm. do you know what i mean is that why you don't be bringing them out the ones you're red you know? like why why isn't this on the rack <laughs> you know like, i made this like a couple of years ago i don't i don't know about it yeah oh, so that's why i give them out to people <laughs> and i can just uh but like once also i made my first um series of jackets called the harry harry series jackets mm. it was so good i had to name it after myself <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you know yeah. and I even just everywhere i used to go like people would be like oh damn where'd you get a jacket from where you go mm. where, where's that jacket from he's like yeah this, this is my first prototype and like guys were so amazed by it and mm. i'm like okay i think finally i'm after all that product testing of different items yeah i'm i've hit the nail with this one so i'm gonna use this product to help to penetrate my brand yeah. into the market. Into so the if market. you have like a very strong initial product that helps you penetrate the market, I think that's like a very good place to start from. So yeah. like something that really makes you stand out, mm. it's, it will make that transition very easier for you. Yeah. I'd say. yeah. Oh, wow. Because mm. I always think like, I mean, I told you the story I had with my vanity table, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not good, not <laughs> good. But it's always about like, this is something that you're producing. This is something you're taking out into the world. You don't want to do a bad job. Right. right? Like, yes, be a perfectionist. <laughs> what, Binet, what does Binette always say? So be a perfectionist and make that work for you. Mm. Because you, it's your name on this brand. Right, it's exactly. your work going out into the world. Exactly. Do it with like 110%. Mm. It doesn't mean you have to take like years to do it. No, no. But be really fine-tuned with it. And I, I like that. And also the fact that you wore your first prototype and you got so many reactions yeah. and that's what made you like i worked push. for like a whole year before like beforehand i was yeah. just, i was product testing it just i wanted to make sure it's like the best jacket ever yeah. and just wear it all the time i still wear it even yeah. today it's nice. i feel like if i was to get into like fashion design or like having a brand i would take on like what you just did mm. the fact that you wore it it's kind of you get almost like a review in real time exactly like, yeah you see what people like think about it you get people's perspectives on it and 100%. then you're making something yeah. that somebody is going to buy mm-hmm. some people are going to buy people are going to love yeah wow guys i might just become like how i <laughs> at odds point two <laughs> the field is very ripe this room for, this room for everyone there is so yeah you think mm-hmm I don't know. It's a bit scary, I think, being in the Kenyan market. Yeah. What is what has been the toughest thing about being a fashion designer, or 
owning a fashion brand in the Kenyan market or the Kenyan fashion industry? What's like the hardest thing that you've experienced? I feel like sometimes people, um, it's like they'll not, they'll, they'll not want to acknowledge you from the get go. Okay. So like it's um it's a matter of oh okay he's cool but like he's not he's not into the scene as much so like i'm not gonna fuck with his shit as much mm. and then i think once everyone knows it's like one every and now you get everyone trying to be like oh yeah yeah your band is so cool and everything but you know you, you've been doing it for a while yeah and like it was just like oh yeah, cool 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 yeah, yeah. yeah good for you mate mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know what i mean so i feel like sometimes it takes a bit of time for people to accept what you're doing mm. and appreciate it and also want to consume it mm. you know mm. um because like i remember like in the initial periods we, we hardly used to get any sales yeah. you know mm. and people would just be looking at it and be like oh it's, it's a cool jumper mm. but like we didn't really but maybe because also because it they didn't really associate associate themselves with the brand so as well so i think that having communicating your brand and um being in the right spaces with the right people mm. Mm. then they'll start giving you the props that you should have really be having because like but yeah. sometimes yeah i think that's like one of the toughest parts yeah. so like i mean I kenyans can be cloud chasers yeah. like you're waiting for your Barack jacuzzis and your your big names to like mm. actually purchase something from the Kenyan like market. And then yeah, and then, nice and then you're like, love. ooh, I love, yeah. I love, I love. Because Instead of just like buying it because it actually is a good product. You know I mean? Yeah. I'm o- I've always been scared of like starting a business, for example, in Kenya purely because I know people would rather have fashion over or pretty little thing and spend a lot of money mm-hmm. importing it into the country than to purchase from a Kenyan brand. And I'm not going to lie, I have been part of them people. <laughs> like, because I still will ship in some fashion over yeah. and stuff like that. But it's the fact that somehow it's always better for them to purchase from people that are not Kenyan. And I don't know what that, I don't know what it is about that. Like, It's, that, it's also that mentality that there's not, um, Kenyans don't make quality items mm, and mm. that line has been flowed a little bit with like also brands put in mediocre work so mm. like now they kind of put all fashion brands in this category that they just make stuff that's not that good it's not that much of a quality item mm. so that's why you really have to focus on if you're going to penetrate that Kenyan market you really have to prove to them you have to work, you have to work twice as hard as that fashion of a brand to prove to them that no exactly. you are actually of high quality mm. and you are deserving of them buying your shit mm. for example so i think once i realized that um, we like we really just had to focus on making sure the quality of our items are top notch yeah and like that really helped us build our brand on based on that you know because with someone who come like oh my god this t-shirt is such a great quality where'd you where'd you, where'd you bring it from All and the time, they're like guys. <laughs> they're know? always saying that <laughs> you know and then we're like no everything is made and sourced in kenya mm. and like they'd be like oh really so this is made in kenya and like yeah yes and it's like why are you being so apprehensive about it mm. like you know there's really cool brands mm. and like even besides that also there's actually a few really dope brands in kenya it just yeah. takes you to going out and discovering and them, discovering yeah. them. Yeah. i feel like it's good to have like some people who like i really like to listen to like kenyan brand owners that's yeah. why when i interview like some mm. of the people it's because i want you to be able to be sent out there like it's not easy to find people are not looking right, but when you have right. people like when i interview you mm-hmm. and even just one person who's watching now knows that odds is a right. kenyan owned brand, brand and they sell some fashion over style stuff you know like modern like really good quality okay not fashion over because yeah, come on uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I apologize. Not, fast not, fast fashion, not fashion, fashion not fast fashion high quality but, lasts for a long time but you're looking for something that accentuates the body you know that looks good that is good quality like i'm telling you like she's you wearing, see, the anita I'm dress. wearing the anita dress yes yeah. can you see <laughs> i mean i'll post the pictures on instagram so you yeah. can go and follow me there okay and follow howie um but it's the quality and I love the quality. It feels good. It looks good. It smells good. <laughs> I always be telling him his clothes smell good. And he's like, they were just in my bag. And I'm like, your bag smell that good? Like, what? But <laughs> like, it smells better than mine. And I'm a girl. <laughs> like, what? But, um, yeah, I think interviewing Kenyan entrepreneurs and business owners right. is really good to take your name out there. 
right. there might be somebody in the UK watching this who is like, I didn't know Kenyans have like brands and their fashion is really good. And I'm mm. like, baby, you don't know anything. Like, we are starting. Mm, we're we're going to blow up. We're just getting started. I mean, that's another thing. Maybe we don't market ourselves so well. We, we need to be bitching our chills yeah. even louder. But it takes time as well. Yeah, it yeah. does take mm. it does take time. But I think we're getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. For I like sure. to believe in our people. Yes, you know? 100%. Okay, so when it comes to your brands, yes. what is the, what would you, de- what's a word that you'd use to describe your, like, design, aesthetic, or signature style? Like, right. Yeah. So um, uh, our our key like in, in our bio, mm-hmm. um, uh, we usually say ours is a ours is a young contemporary and lifestyle brand. Mm-hmm. We focus on the cuts, mm-hmm. fabric, and we keep it fun and classy. Mm. You know, so um, ours is very much to do with how the clothes fit, um, yeah. and this is based off the structure. How has it been designed? So like we we don't try and be too innovative in a way but we are very innovative in terms of like the simple things have to work very mm-hmm. well do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and so when you focus on the simple items you're able to create a great item because you're doing the basics at a very high quality mm-hmm. and then now if you add to that with top quality fabrics and you're not cutting cost on fabrics you're able to create a timeless uh, element a yeah. timeless piece which is structured mm-hmm. properly and has great quality fabric yeah. i think that's <laughs> the best description of anything i have heard in a long time <laughs> like what timeless baby timeless you pieces. heard that because i've seen a couple of people in this dress and every single body type looks amazing mm. like it really like cinches in the waist real nice it accentuates your bottom, your bottom. Mm. <laughs> um it shows off your curves because we are black girls mm. we all have curves like oh. you even that little tiny like that is a curve mm-hmm. and it sits in all the right places so <laughs> do you know how many prototypes you made before you came out right how many? five and then the sixth one is like okay now we can do now it. we're good <laughs> <laughs> well you see it's a work it's an effort it's a yeah. time mm. and now it's like a, a beautiful piece like mm. plus size xl xs like, like small all, small, you know. all sorts of people mm-hmm. and different ty- body types look amazing in this dress and <laughs> big ups on you then five thank prototypes you. Thank you. they did something because the sixth one came out right yeah. <laughs> the sixth one came out right <laughs> but okay so you did five prototypes for this but what is your basic like day in the life when you are maybe going to the manufacturer and right. and you're you're trying to process the process of making like a unit mm. yeah um so okay so also right now we're in this stage where um we're focusing on business growth okay and to do that we have a batch of products that we know we've done very well Mm -hmm. so are we going to invest money into doing like new collections every other season or every other four months or are we just going to focus on like what we're already do, doing very well mm-hmm. and see whether we can sell a thousand of that? Come as on. Opposed to, like, you know what I mean? As mm. opposed to like be making one item here, selling five or two. Mm. Uh, no, I have this really good set of products. Mm. I'm just going to focus on them. Mm-hmm. They run out of stock. They run out of stock. Yeah. And I just keep selling them. I keep selling them. I keep selling them. Because you know, they're, you know they're, I mean? they're the ones that are going to sell. Yeah. And it, you could argue that it's very, that could be argued like a very commercial aspect of it. But not really. I think you also need to make sure like your business is able to be sustainable and sustain itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if you're making stuff every other day and you're not making any sales, you're going to run bankrupt. So like mm-hmm. uh, balancing that creative inside you and no, and having to be that business person as well is yeah. very key. And we've been focusing on like very much the business element. So because we want to, establish a proper establishment where by the end of next year even here or but by the end of this year or beginning of next year we have enough money to spend on a proper big collection of like 20 50 items mm. and it's not going to put a big dent in us mm. like we can mm. we can do it but like yeah. right now focus on what you do very well within your field and mm-hmm. see how you can expand that and maximize it you know that's a that's great mentality mm. like i know i'd be the one who'd be like okay I like this. Let me post this. Let me post this. Let me post this. Let me make this. Let me make this. And it's like, I'm as you said, I'm mm. making like twenty different items, <laughs> and one is selling of each, mm. or what? Five is selling of one, but I decided to ignore that and go and make. That is such. Whoa. Okay. Well, let me let me really ponder on that because what? Should take a breath. <laughs> yeah. Like, that is insane. Mm-hmm. That is 
that's a business man i can see where your ip consulting <laughs> like your law like your yeah. is coming into like mm-hmm. your business and your brand and you eventually get to the point where you're sleeping and your clothes are selling and you can bring out new merch like you know? or new products like all the time but you're making money in bed Ooh. exactly oh i can't wait guys <laughs> until i am asleep and <laughs> there's money rolling into my account yeah. like i sleep them eight hours and <laughs> i've already made like eight million like that's what that's where we're getting to that's what we want Mm -hmm. but i like how right now that is what you're focusing on because that's going to help somebody who who is probably like all over the place about their business yeah exactly yeah that's true and they don't know maybe which way to go to go ahead with it yeah thanks thanks for me and thanks for them i'm telling them (laughs) i'm telling them Mm -hmm. okay so i know it can be really difficult to like stay motivated especially Right. right owning a brand mm-hmm, maybe mm-hmm. you're not always seeing the sales that you want right, right. um maybe you want to give up maybe it's you're like okay i'm tired of doing this and it's not yielding right. what do you do to stay motivated <laughs> i dream a lot you do i have so <laughs> many dream. dreams I and I, dream. <laughs> you know, <laughs> i'm a big dreamer mm-hmm. um i think sometimes my head is in a cloud a lot mm-hmm. um so I think I'm always, I always have so many ideas and like I get frustrated when I don't execute them, yeah. you know, yeah. and so being able to like what I usually try and do is like, okay, I can only move to these other next ideas until I've maximized on what I'm doing right now. So that oh. it motivates me to, okay, actually, I don't have, time is not on my side because mm. I'm to stuff I have to do, do you know what I mean? I need to really do this stuff right mm. now and like push and push and push so that I can start doing the other stuff properly mm-hmm. so that also really motivates me but also just like you know uh, just dreaming big and like wanting better for yourself yeah. I'm like, it, it sounds like yeah yeah, yeah but like it's no, just but seriously you like know, yeah. when you when you when you see your brand like try and see your brand in like five years time and like understand how much work you need to do because it's a lot of work mm. it is a lot of work mm. and sometimes i don't want to wake up and go to the factory i just want to sit down in the house and watch netflix and, and, do, and nothing. do nothing <laughs> do you know mm-hmm. what i mean but but I'm also that guy who I love doing stuff. That's why I have to live in a city. Yeah. Like, so, like sometimes when I go to coast and, I, and, I, and I'm there for like two weeks, mm-hmm. I'd be sitting there on a sofa. I'm like, no, like okay, wait. I swear I'm meant to be doing something. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 just going to chill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love like that. doing stuff. Yeah, I, me too. I, yeah, I, I like hate being stuff. idle. Yeah, exactly. Like when I'm idle, I'm like, damn. Mm. Like... <laughs> It like makes me itch. You know? Like I could fall into depression if I'm idle. I'm not <laughs> exactly. trying to get into that. Like, yeah, yeah. So I just keep moving. Just yeah, keep, keep moving. moving. It keeps your mind active. It keeps yeah. you yeah. Because like even just what you said, I think not doing a lot of stuff sometimes. Just being very an idle mind can lead you into believing like you're sad mm. and whatnot. But really, it's just I think you're sad because you're not doing the stuff you should be doing. Like, <laughs> you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Mm. But okay. Wow. Okay. So. That's interesting because I feel like I might be one of them people who I dream a lot, but I find it very hard to execute the dream that I have right now. Mm. I move on to the next dream and I'm like, and then the next dream and I'm like, and the next, and like, I've had like five dreams and not a single one has been done. You need to start with one at a time and then you'll see how good that one goes. And then just you have ADHD? It. You don't. I think mm. you do not. I don't know. What, what is it? I have short attention span. Yeah, you ain't got ADHD. <laughs> like you ain't got ADHD or ADD, maybe you good. Because I think that's what makes me like. Mm. You know, with ADHD, you're always like, like I could be working on this thing, I have another idea, and then uh, yeah, you right, just keep right, like right, going. Right. Like you have like six hundred and I don't mm. know one things on your mind at one time. Oh right, okay. Which is why I'm a beautiful multitasker. Beautiful. <laughs> the small small things. Just the small things. Small yeah. small small. Um, mm. but. That's a uh, that's really insane. Mm. You're so young and are able to. I have a dream. Let me execute this. I have a dream. Let me ex- you end up executing almost everything that yeah. you dreamt about. Or and in between, you find yourself mm. even doing other things mm. that you didn't actually think about. Mm. And you're like, oh my god, I did that as well. Like, oh my god. And you look back and you're yeah. like, <laughs> what? Look but, at me yeah, go. <laughs> well, I think it's also with that in that stage of time, it's also important to maybe take a step back mm-hmm. and yeah. really. I still, I still like, you know, when people be like, "Oh my God, your brand is so great and everything." Like, I hear it and I understand and I get it and I'm very appre- thankful mm-hmm. and like, do you know what I mean? But in my mind, I'm just like, do you know, like, I feel like I'm I'm five percent into what I want to do. Ooh, 
<laughs> so it's hard to appreciate you're when like you guys so don't even know <laughs> like how much you don't know yeah. i'm not even there yet baby i'm yeah. not even there yet yeah but wow i do like your brand a lot thank you like your brand is we're crazy. looking forward to see you wearing more items i will be yeah for sure i should model for you maybe you can do get ready with me what we've been mm. talking about that i know mm-hmm. it really needs to be done 100 percent. okay what is one word that would that you would use that sets your brand apart from any other brand in Kenya? Oof. Or a sentence, to be honest. <laughs> anything. <laughs> what? <laughs> anything. Um, what would you say? I think um, our brand, so our odds mm-hmm. is, from my perspective, mm-hmm. is lucky in a sense that I think I have a lot of depth in terms of like exposure. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes what, that's why I feel like um, maybe if someone who's only lived in Nairobi is trying to launch a brand here in Nairobi, mm-hmm. there's only so much of what they can refer from. I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel like um, uh, sometimes I say this, I've been lucky enough to live in like different countries experience fashion at a very high end level yeah do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and like so from that i feel i've been able to appreciate like the cuts and appreciate like different designs appreciate how to use fabrics that maybe someone would think is not really for clothes yeah mm-hmm. and i was like okay but i can i can see how this could work for xyz mm-hmm. so like that also and i think also i think a bit differently because i'm dyslexic and i've always been Boy, I did not know that. <laughs> what? It actually are? makes you think a bit differently, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think, in my opinion, it's not always for the good, but I think it does make you think differently. Because, like, I'm a, become a bit of an overthinker as mm-hmm. well, in mm-hmm. a way, because you're always like, do I, do I understand this? Do I am I really getting it? Let me go back. Let me go through it a few mm-hmm. more times and a few more times, and then I come up with that. So, like, it might take me a longer time to process something, but yeah. it's because. My brain is looking at so many different levels of it, mm-hmm. and then once it clicks, it clicks. It's you know clicked. I mean? you know I mean? It's yeah. Yeah. clicked. Mm. But the fact that you you will like you'll be like, okay, I don't understand that. Let me research it again. Mm. You're in a way better position than just a simple normal ass person, like mm. because you've done more research than the average person. Right. Because you want to understand, like you want to get it, like, and then when you get it you get it like you're not just there like into production. Yeah, yeah. Y- you're like mm. wow i first of all i didn't know know you were dyslexic yeah <laughs> and that puts you intellect ip <laughs> consulting a law mm. fashion designer i would have never thought big big ups on you wow, wow. wow. guys are you basic <laughs> are you basic because I don't think anyone's basic really you just need to find your mojo <laughs> I'm, I really be shitting on my people. I'm sorry. I love you guys. Uh, I do. I do. And he loves. Can they too. hear you? Yeah, they can. All right. <laughs> but you know, no, really, you know, it's gonna go out. <laughs> it's right. not life. <laughs> it's not life. Okay. okay. But what's a busy? What's your day today? Like, what's a busy day? Like a busy schedule yeah, day. Like a busy day. Like yeah. a busy day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I wake up. Um, I usually hit my gym session from eight to ten. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on what I have to do afterwards, I will either go to the factory mm-hmm. um factory on my way to the factory i usually okay nowadays i buy my fabric in bulk so i don't usually go sourcing for fabric a lot mm-hmm. so once i'm going to the factory i'm going there to work on one item or two items for the day you know mm-hmm. i don't want to overload them with stuff so i go there and work on one item or two items a day i bring it back um Make you use in it. People wear my stuff. <laughs> Literally yes. try them on. Like, <laughs> try them on, guys. I need to get. I think I need to cinch this in. <laughs> yeah, I need to do I this. I think I wanna. Yeah. You know. He be doing that for real, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he be making us try them on. And I'm so happy with it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Not me being a model. <laughs> you know? So there, I'm like, that's when like in a producing stage and like, let's say maybe I had some content. Work on the social media page as well. Try yeah. and post a answer the dms if there's any orders um and like that kind of stuff what else um we'll be drawing we'll be yeah, making yeah. sketches we've been drawing um writing down the items we need i usually try and do like not that many tasks a day like four to five tasks at most and then you get them done uh, yeah yeah satisfaction know, when you go home you tick 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 like, even if it's not a lot just five 
for do five tasks in a day. I feel but that's really how you like. hold yourself accountable in yeah. some way. That's how you get your to do mm, list to done do this, because yeah. people are out here with like twenty things. Do, how are you trying to do twenty things in a day? I'm one of them. <laughs> um, I'm like twenty things, and I'm like, damn. When mm. I get home, I'm like, oh my god, I haven't done this. I haven't done that. I haven't mm. done this. And it actually makes me feel upset. Instead of looking at it as I've done five things. things yeah. The fact that I have done five, five things, things yeah. I should give myself a real pat on the back. Maybe a glass of wine, you know. Mm. Rip out the wine. <laughs> eat some trashy food, you know. <laughs> Be happy. You know? But I'm out here panicking, like, oh my God, I didn't get that done. You're trying to do 50 know. things a day. Like, yeah. why? And you're not going to you know. pay attention to anything. I don't know why I do that. This is ADHD. Like, it's ADHD. It's ADHD. Yeah. Let's blame it on the ADHD. <laughs> let's, bl- let's just blame it on the ADHD. Yeah. Maybe not the procrastination. But let's blame oh, it on the ADHD. I procrastinate as well. But I but. know you. I know you. We've been sitting in the same office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we look at each other like, <laughs> Cap, Howie. Cap, <laughs> Howie. <laughs> but um, I like the whole five thing. Five mm-hmm. lists. You get them done. You got mm-hmm. this, 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 this. Mm-hmm. By the end of the day, you're like, you know, happy you're good you're content you. 100%. you've done it yeah, that's a, a good that's a good thing to think about and mm-hmm. to maybe look into that and be like mm-hmm. real serious about it mm-hmm. <laughs> think about it the day before i should you know what yeah. i started doing actually yeah. on sundays i will i never used to do this before which is why i miss gondwana okay. this is why because i was like first of all if i go to gondwana i know i'm gonna drink and if i drink i'm gonna take three days to recover silly so I was like, good, what do I do? I sat down and I literally panned my entire week. Mm-hmm. What I need to do, the content, it took me hours. I can't mm-hmm. even lie. I was out there like, chat GPT, can you plan this for me? Oh. And they weren't doing what I wanted. So yeah. I had to actually like write it down. And, yeah. and oddly enough, everything or most things that I had planned mm-hmm. have been done. done. So yeah. I'd never been the type of, I would wake up and be like, okay, I need to do my to-do list. Right, right. But then I realized I wake up too late. I need to go shower. I need to put mm-hmm. on my makeup. I need to do my wig. I need to get to work. Like, Right. So like planning it, it also like helps you get out of bed earlier, yeah, it does because you know you already know what your day is like exactly. as opposed to like being in bed like okay what am I gonna do today like I'm out there like scrolling on Instagram like <laughs> okay know? should that yeah. video be and I mm-hmm. end up being in bed like for like an hour after mm-hmm. I'm woken up mm-hmm. and I'm like it makes no sense but if exactly. I plan it I'm like oh I know this is the song I want to use on this content yeah. or this is the video that I want to mimic then I'm like good to go I get up and I'm like I shower I, you know let's yeah, do this get exactly. ready for me boom. Bush, See, bush, I'm bush. not too bad. Yeah, she good. <laughs> I'm getting better. You're Guys, good. I'm getting better. You're good. You're good. Which is funny because I haven't told them in a while. First of all, I told them that I was still doing my little workouts. I was not. Guys, it's been <laughs> like two months. I can't lie to you no more. <laughs> but we're getting back on track. Just here. Well, yeah. Season two, guys. Yeah. This is season two, by the way, if you didn't oh, know. Season and you're the first oh, person in our season damn. two. Okay. I just Love decided it. that we're going to do it in eight, eight <laughs> episodes. <laughs> just eight episodes. Eight Take episodes a break then. Eight yeah. episodes. Come so back. welcome. So I'm anyway. very happy to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Mm-hmm. It's great great conversations. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what have you learned collaborating with professionals in the fashion industry, like tailors or manufacturers, models, mm. photographers? What have you learned... I about think, it. so I think in terms of collaborative aspects, I always hasn't had like a collab with another brand as of yet mm-hmm. per se. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, what we have been able to do is work with, um, okay, was it, yeah, okay, not with brands per se, but I've collaborated with creatives, mm-hmm. with creatives. So like when we did um, our Dunina Mambo, Okay, so my first ever proper drop was called um, Breathe Easy, Go Outside. Mm-hmm. And so this oh, was just nice. like, <laughs> Breathe Easy, Go Outside was a series of like um, shorts. Sh- t- um, that's when we first dropped the crop top. We had the oversized t-shirts and we had the our staple jackets and had some slides. And so... Um, oh, I never saw the slides. Oh, yeah. I, I never, they weren't, never went into production proper. I think we need to do more research on it. Mm. Um, but so I was talking to my friend Nathaniel Nat, who's like very key to our odds and um, um, at that time it was me, Nat and Shani mm-hmm. where we used to meet up and like you know because like I also I'm not very good at expressing myself okay. which I find I can express myself in that's like crazy well. you've just done a whole like 40 <laughs> minutes of a, uh, yeah, of well. a podcast <laughs> like <laughs> okay this, uh, I'm starting to learn as well this yeah. is like the third interview I've done now so, so it's, like, it's through getting, experience yeah, yeah you're getting my it experience. Mm. and also like I feel like you're putting me at ease you know like hitting oh, me with like so many tough questions do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah uh-huh. 
so like um so being able to express okay because like i might have the idea in my head but i'm not expressing it in terms of like what it meant to me when i was making these items Mm -hmm. so like when i was working with shani and nathaniel they'd sit me down and they just ask me questions so like what was your objective with this Mm. like i had made the entire collection but i didn't even have a name for it Mm -hmm. i didn't even know i didn't really really know what i was trying to aim with it i just knew these are the pieces that i'm making Mm -hmm. but once they sat me down for example and they asked me like this simple question such as like well what was your goal when you're making it i was like I just wanted something that you could wear and just do like a small little trip and have like a nice picnic with your friends mm. uh, breathe easy go outside because like sometimes when you're in Nairobi like things are going things are moving so quickly and fast. you forget like how even beautiful our country is mm-hmm. and you can just take like a one hour drive to a forest and like you know just be in a complete just different scenery yeah, yeah breathe easy breathe easy <laughs> go outside mm-hmm. so and then from there and I <laughs> literally I was like yeah so the aim was just to breathe so you can breathe easy in the items and go outside and like i think that's what you should name it when i breathe these grass i'm like do you know there what? we go so i had the answers in my head all the time it was I, just, there. I just needed the somebody right to help you express. bring it exactly, out exactly yeah nice nice so that's why i think working with creatives as well is good because like also people who can help you think better mm-hmm. and express yourself um so like for example when we were doing our second um drop which was called the dunena mambo mm-hmm. this one was also like this one was also like just during the election period, do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. now we were thinking of comfort wear. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to make items that like the world like I don't, and so much shit was going on All back then. The time, do you know like, what I mean? And mm-hmm. like it's like I just wanted to make stuff that can remind you like it might be crazy and I th- think it might but like you, these are items you can wear and also just feel good about yourself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Take take a dip take a deep breath yes, and just feel nice. Realize the world yeah, might yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. going crazy but mm. We're good. Exactly. We'll be good. We'll yeah, be good. We'll be good. Mm-hmm. So that's why I call you Duni and Amambo. Forget about all the stuff that's going on. Mm-hmm. Dress nicely. Feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. And then, like, despite what everything is happening, and with that, with that campaign, um, um, my really good friend Shani was able to select like the photographer. And that was like, let's do it at this house. At that time, I was also like, because like you're looking at, oh my god, this is gonna be so expensive. It's gonna mm-hmm. be so expensive. But mm-hmm. sometimes also. Because if you're always thinking about the expenses as well, you can restrict yourself from doing so many things. Exactly. So like when you get to collaborate with people, mm. you can really focus. Okay, I'm gonna put a lot of money into production, but everyone, it's gonna come back to everyone in a way. It's mm-hmm. like you always have to remember those people who were there for you. Yeah, and it's very key for us. We like, well, I do definitely want to like always give back and mm-hmm. stuff. You know, mm-hmm. especially for. Because I like a, you, exa- you know? exactly because yeah. I really like like a really good thing that I see you do or like see the net do or a lot of like creatives in Kenya is that they collaborate collaborate or just help each other out yeah exactly yeah. like I know when I had the idea for the podcast I went to Noni I ran to her and I was like mama I know you be doing videography you'd be doing mm-hmm. photography like I need you and we don't have necessarily have the best equipment we don't necessarily have the best space like guys if you do we fill about a quarter of a room like mm-hmm. like but we just did it and that's because yeah. we were able to put our minds together yeah. and think okay you know what let's let's just get it done mm-hmm. like it might not first of all give us any money mm-hmm. um or we might have to spend a bit of money on the lighting or a bit of money on this but this is what we want to do, so yeah, let's do it. Exactly, yeah. And it's the fact that I'm a creative and she's a creative, and we're able to just talk and come up with like an idea of like mm. how we're gonna do this, like, and we did it. Yeah. And because we had different minds, different ideas, and we brought us, mm. we, we brought each, each other's ideas together, and, yeah. and beca- it became something. Like just having that conversation with somebody mm. who I know who's a creative and who I can benefit from, and they can benefit mm-hmm, from yeah, me too. Exactly, yeah that kind of exchange i think is really good with with creatives in nairobi yeah like, social equity is lit- really key yeah i did not know there was a word for that <laughs> <laughs> there we go with the with the law and the ip <laughs> consulting <laughs> and, the, and the, the fashion designer like mm. i did not know there was a word for that <laughs> yeah, thank okay. you i learn something new every day oh, learn something every new every day mm. okay so talk a bit about your current drop you're wearing one of the shirts yeah so um so this shirt's how do I define it? So like, okay, I've also been, I'm a bit of a holder. I collect, <laughs> I collect fabric. Me and too. I collect so many fabrics. Mm-hmm. So I've been sitting on these fabrics for over a year and a bit. 
Wow. And I just like, mm, I, di- I didn't know what to do with them. I wasn't really ready for it because our brand at then was really focused on like the basics colors of tones and everything mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean you can't just you don't have do to just do one thing yeah mm-hmm. like try and like always say throw your fish as wide as you can mm-hmm. you know what I mean? and then yeah mm-hmm. you don't and have to like yeah, stick to one exactly what do they call it is something it's, they've got a word for it one niche mm. mm-hmm. i mean it, type do you know what I mean? type thing yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so this and part of like even so okay the other aspect of it was instead of like doing a full collection this year i've been aiming to like drop one or two items every month okay Mm. and what that helps me to do is to focus on like so for example when you do the vino set Mm -hmm. you know we were able to focus on pushing that product for about two weeks Mm -hmm. you know what i mean before Mm -hmm. it dropped Mm -hmm. so the perception was already been built you know we had a cool photo shoot Mm -hmm. we had Posting pictures, pushing, you are pushing, out there, you you're know? getting out there, people yeah. are learning about it. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. So by the time we're even going to the pop up pop up markets, we're selling this thing like it's literally selling itself off the rack. It's mm-hmm. selling itself off of people are coming and you take a picture of someone at the market and they're wearing it. So like that from that perspective, like doing one or two products a month, mm-hmm. and this was like this was like mm, last month, no, no, the month before we did the Fali shirts, mm-hmm. and even now our first batch did so well. Mm-hmm. It might. We didn't, we didn't even push it that much online, but we knew where we we're going to, so like knowing where You're our target knew, market, yeah. do you know what I mean? We know what the target market likes and like, how can we take what they like and build something of our own mm-hmm. that will make them happy as well. Mm-hmm. So doing this different pop-ups like pop-up and chill, biz buzz and all these places, mm-hmm. we're able to sell out, we're able to push the so many products that now we're able to come back and do more and i mean more. i watched you guys sell at the <laughs> nollywood white to cape uh, yeah. party yeah. i was like whoa mm. like you guys did so well and it's like i feel like it's because you already established yourself as a brand that sells good clothes yeah. that sells stuff that people like mm. like you know your market you know your people right. and you had the right people around to, 100%. to look and be like really like interested in oh what you have here mm. what you have here I was like, guys, I really watched them, and I was like, <laughs> I want to be like you. <laughs> like, I want to, yeah. my little 23 year old mm-hmm. self wants to be exactly like you. That's why I keep saying you guys are like my inspiration because I really sit and just like watch them do their thing. Mm. And it's the fact that they actually do their thing that just that. like blows my mind. Yeah. Like, all the time. Mm. But, but like, yeah, um, just executing, executing ideas. It's crazy. Basically, it's a big privilege, and I think mm-hmm. we also appreciate how lucky we are, you know. Mm. And yeah, we n- yeah never take anything lucky. for granted. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You guys are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your non-negotiable? Like the one thing you do every single day that makes life just so much easier for you, yourself. Oof. Every day. Every day. Do you have, have that one thing that you do like every like day? Like have a shower. <laughs> yeah, like something like that, but don't, don't be basic. <laughs> <laughs> Give it something. What's the non-negotiable mm. for every day? Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, do you like say an affirmation or like say a prayer, or um, not not really. I think okay, but every day, I would say I, I always have this moments of where I think of where I want to go. Okay. Yeah, I think of where I want to go with that mm-hmm. odds, you know, and that really helps me get up and do stuff, mm-hmm. you know. So it's not like an affirmation, it's just like more of where do I see the brand at XYZ stage? Mm-hmm. And like, where well, I better go and get work done because, like, you know. Let me get my ass yeah. to work right now. Because <laughs> yeah. this ain't going to be done by nobody but me. Yeah, like, if I don't go. <laughs> but also having like targets. So, like, for example, for me, my target every. My target also like okay so now it's, it could seem very commercial but I have like a minimum of like I want to do X amount of sales a day mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so having that target every day when I wake up in the morning I know I need to do I need to sell th- four to five pieces today mm-hmm. and I ha- having that every day you might not sell it but you'll do activities that will get you like that will one get step you closer exactly. to doing that every day you know mm-hmm. and so that's that's what really um, that's what I actually I would say that's like my what I for every day is like trying to get three to four cells a day because if you don't do that your stuff is going to be seen at the rack people need to know you need to be pushing your shit mm-hmm. every day mm-hmm. you know and like if 
it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. like sometimes you're just like, okay. and sometimes you might slack, and you might slack for three days, and you're like, oh shit, it's been three days since that's I made why it. We, so. That's why you have social <laughs> media managers, you know, content that's creators true. working that's for true. you. That's true. That's <coughs> true. Yeah. <laughs> we do that, yeah, we need to start yeah. having a team to make also. your life like much easier. That's why yeah, these true. people like, because I know, yeah. I know that yeah. can be hard. <laughs> running your own business and running like everything, everything yeah, that can you need to learn how to delegate. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah, you get there. Mm-hmm. You know, you get there. Yeah, <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, you get there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, so we are done with this segment. Okay. Okay. So we're now on to a quick fire segment. You get five questions, only five questions. You get like less than a minute to answer the questions, either a phrase or a word. And then we just, so we can pick your brain a bit, okay. see what goes on in that big, beautiful brain of yours, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, so the first question is, what is the worst advice you've ever been given? I feel like we already asked this question though. Oh, worst advice you've ever been given? Mm-hmm. I think, okay, the worst advice is just like, it's a very tough market or it's a very you no know, someone just giving you the negatives of something that you want to do for mm. example like mm-hmm. not really um being optimistic do you know what i mean so like yeah i would say just that's like um or trying to convince you like the kenyan market is not ready for fashion you. or <laughs> you or anything so that's like in terms of my career right now i would say that's also like um yeah Worst advice. You've mm. been given. Mm. All right. Okay, second question. Where do you see at odds and yourself in five to ten years? Five to ten years. So um, we definitely want to be a home staple brand here in Kenya. Okay. With different stores. Mm, um, different stores, doing bigger things, you know, going into hopefully furniture. We'll see even if it's furniture. Well, Hello. Guys, he told us something. Yeah, he told us something. We never know. We <laughs> never know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in five years, we see ourselves really penetrating um, the Kenyan market mm-hmm. for sure. And then by the time we're doing 10 years, now we're looking into going bigger than um, the African region and dabbing into the US, dabbing into the US. No. You know? I like that for yeah. you. What about you? Where do you see yourself personally in five to 10 years? In five to ten years, I definitely see myself. Kenya is gonna be home for me forever. I think I'm very, I'm very much at peace in Kenya. I love. I see myself here, and I see myself living a very um, relaxed life in the sense of, um, you know, I'm just doing what I want to, but mm-hmm. I'm also taking life slow and mm-hmm. like I'm just enjoying the finer things in life <laughs> in ten years. But still, still with, uh, still with, uh, maybe I've had now have a few factories, I'm um, producing mass not in masses but like you know big 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 yeah so growing vertically you know yes so f- from having our own production lines having our own stores having our own distributors and are we making are we starting to look into do our own fabrics as well so like mm. always growing vertically yeah become your own self-sufficient yeah. little brains i think that's brains. The best way everything to cut happens costs. at at odds yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like yeah. That. okay um, what advice would you give your 18 year old self about going into adulting and going into like the the, the working world hmm. some part of me wishes that I'd just started earlier you know because even back in high school I could have done art and textiles I could have done sewing I could have done photography mm-hmm. I could have done all the stuff that would have really helped me right now mm-hmm. but like you know I wanted to be with my boys, I wanted to be with my friends, so I was doing economics, business, and do you know what I mean? Like, really, try and really think for yourself, mm-hmm. as opposed to trying to be thinking as a column, do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like so a like collective. Like a collective, mm-hmm. yeah. So, like, really, and, like, don't be afraid. Um, I mean, I mean, obviously, yeah, playing it safe just doesn't work out. That's mm-hmm. what I've learned, playing it safe never really works like the bigger the risk the better off you are mm-hmm. and i think if i'd started earlier i mean i think maybe the journey would have been a bit more difficult because the market was it was as receptive as it is right now mm-hmm. but i would definitely be so much further myself mm-hmm. you know if i started like 18 at, at the age of 18 
like maybe I'd have gone to fashion school, you know, mm-hmm. I'd have learned all the basics, sort of learned how to sew myself, I'd have learned how to create patterns. I'd have so much more skills mm. to be able to do even like those crazy runway dresses and that kind of stuff. Where because right now I'm still uh, now I'm in I'm in the industry and like cause now I'm I'm starting to see okay I want to go back to school to do the things that maybe I should have just done from the beginning as opposed to playing it safe or doing a low career because mm-hmm. you know the path has already been paved for you. You do you do this, you go and do that, you get a job, you work here, you try and climb up the ladder. Mm-hmm. It's a very given path. So like really work on creating your own path is what um i'd advise myself at 18 year olds because like once you create your own path you know you're not like competing with anyone and like so your expo your ex- growth exponential mm-hmm. is just really how far you want to push it because it's your own path mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah take the risk how you want i heard someone i think his name is curtis lee some something like that he was like I'm going to stick to my own lane because there's no traffic in my own lane. Mm. Like, if you follow everybody else, you're going to be like, okay, I have to be beat this person. I have to beat the the Pradas and the Gucci's right. and the Louis Vuittons. Right. But if I look at it and I'm like, I'm on my at odds clothing lane, mm-hmm. there's so much possibility. You just can go as far as you want to 100%, go. Yeah. So, so I, like that. I like that. I like that for you. I do. <laughs> Okay. What's one word you would use to describe yourself? One word. Persistent. Persistent. I can be persistent. Mm-hmm. I can be persistent. You go and you do. You, you, yeah. Mm. This is what I want to do. I'm mm-hmm. gonna do it. I'm gonna do yeah, it. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I wish I was persistent. Mm. I am. Speaking into existence. Hundred percent. I am persistent. I'm only persistent to the stuff that I want. Like I can always, I can always also very much lose interest mm. but when i really want something i think i'm i can be quite persistent i can I'm, I'm willing to play the long game i think i think that's a really good position to be in though mm. like you want it you want it real bad so yeah. you will do anything you to, can to, to, make to, to make it happen yeah <laughs> i like that <laughs> <laughs> i always saying i like that i like that okay now the final question then you can talk like a bit about this one and okay. it's just something we always ask our guests yeah what would you change about Kenya, the industry, the economy, whatever, that would help young people thrive, grow, develop, flourish in any sort of field that they want to go into? What is what is one thing that you would change about Kenya? So I'm going to keep it within the fashion industry because okay. that's where I have most depth and knowledge on. But I would say within, uh, even within the fashion industry, I think... Cr- there's so many gatekeepers. Mm-hmm. There's definitely so many gatekeepers. Do you like? Do you know never be fashion week? Mm-hmm. Like such a flop. But <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like the brands are are being displayed. Like, who are you again? But like, do you know what I mean? And it's like, and it's like people are selecting maybe their people, their brand. Mm-hmm. So and you go to these talks or these events, and it's always the same people. It's always the same brands. Mm. So like, there's so much gatekeeping in. Kenya mm-hmm. per se that it's just a bit it's just a bit mad because I feel like the there's so many people who have so much to give mm. and you know what I mean and like okay. even if it's like a brand that does a collaboration with a um with like a young designer I always say my first proper corporate collaboration is going to be with Butter <laughs> we're going to do shoes with Butter one day oh you know, speaking oh. into existence oh you know. But they did they did try and do like this competition thing where they had some designers. I mean that was a good start. But like mm. there's so many, I think, brands that could leverage the young creative minds mm-hmm. and work with them to develop something new mm. and something fresh and then do you know what I mean? And like let let the young creatives sell that story mm. as well do you know what i mean we don't yeah. need to be using your standard photographers or anything people there's so many creative people who can do like a whole new version of it exactly so i think in that way if i was to change the if i was to change and this is something that we'll have to do as well as a brand as we grow will be once we're in a position is to hi, even hire younger designers mm-hmm. put them on you know mm-hmm. and like really give them that platform and give them that motivation and push them and give them the support that they need mm-hmm. you know because entering such a business you need capital you need a lot of capital mm-hmm. and like that's why i think a lot of the brands sometimes take much 
much of a slower time. Luckily, we had capitals when we, we had capital when we started, so that's why we were also able to um, execute our ideas very fine tunely and properly. Mm-hmm. But this probably always is one in many that is able to start with a good amount of capital to push and really strive for mm-hmm. the best. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's the main thing I would say was really like um, open the gates, open the gates. Don't keep it. Don't don't try and hold on to stuff like. If you have events like like I keep coming back to like that Nairobi Fashion Week, Nairobi Fashion Week by now should be having like a two yearly um, thing where you have young designers. Don't charge them like two thousand to come and two thousand dollars to come and display stuff. I'm not, I don't think it's that much, but it's definitely a high fee. But like mm. you know, invite them to this stuff, open the table because I think when the industry grows also together, you know what I mean? It's um, it's very like it creates a very healthy ecosystem mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and it able to now really flourish properly so just reduce the gatekeeping but even the gatekeepers is calm we're just gonna make our own table <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to invite me to your table you know, don't calm, worry I'm, I'm gonna make a new table <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness all right we are it's done it's a wrap <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I Thank really you appreciate for having it. Us. Thank you for having us. Bro, you opened a great my conversation. Mind up. Mm. You really you know I know Howie, guys. I didn't know this Howie. <laughs> I like this Howie too. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. You're definitely going to inspire somebody out there. Whoever it is, even one single soul. If it's one single soul, it will, will be more. But if it's even just one person, yeah. just to see how you have become who you are 100%. and how you have transitioned from corporate to into, business. Into business you know? It's definitely going to be a really good mm. thing to see and hear. So thank you so much for coming. Before we leave, you want to shout yourself out? Shout anybody out. Talk a bit about the family. Fala. Um, who do I shout out? Uh, shout out to just um everyone that I work with. Um, <laughs> we joke because I, I, I work very closely with Vinette and Alexis. Mm. And when we're doing our, our event, someone um said, I'm very happy to support you ladies. And I was like, oh, am I a lady? <laughs> so like, I'm, a lady. <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> so shout out to them as well. Um, I really do like even working with you, others do working with everyone who's done anything with our odds till now do you know what I mean and when you have really focused minds coming together we're starting to learn just how much you can we're get capable done. of so they're like yeah I'm really looking forward to see how this journey goes okay. that's it we have for you guys today if you liked this video go ahead and like comment and subscribe and now before we leave we always leave you guys with a little takeaway something to think about now the takeaway for today is where do you see yourselves in five years years and what are you doing about it i know you don't want to work that nine to five forever so go ahead and think about that and tell us what you think in our comments down below make sure to follow us on all our social media the grind podcast and follow our lovely lovely (laughs) production team cryptic media studios on youtube tiktok and instagram as well and we will see you in our next episode bye our grinders (laughs) <laughs> Shut up, Mumsy. Shut up, Mumsy. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Shout out everyone who's been supporting our odds. Do you know what I mean? If you have a piece from our odds, shout out to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're an early investor. And we appreciate everyone who really likes our stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? And shout out to everyone who we work with. Everyone who's been there from the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know? And everyone who we're going forward with. Exactly. We appreciate you. And like, yeah. And like shout that. out to I appreciate people. your people. Yeah, 100%.